My name is Kathy Disney, and I'm a member of the church's 150th anniversary committee. My fireside chat is about the Unitarian Church of Lincoln's involvement with two local organizations, Fresh Start Home and the Interfaith Housing Coalition. One of the problems of telling a story of recent history is that you can leave people out who are listening to your story. Many members and friends of our church were and are involved in the two stories I am going to tell, and I apologize for not mentioning everyone. If you have experiences to add to the telling of these two stories, let me know and we will get them added. History of Fresh Start Home Thanks to Monica Zinke, Executive Director of Fresh Start, for providing a lot of this information. Fresh Start is a proactive agency focusing on eradicating homelessness for women through quality services and expanded partnerships. Fresh Start Home offers a safe, structured, alcohol and drug-free environment for women invested in attaining self-sufficiency. Services are offered to women ages 19 and older. The relationship between Fresh Start and the Unitarian Church of Lincoln goes back to Fresh Start's inception. In 1991, church member Virginia Hall and others recognized the need to provide services for homeless women in Lincoln, particularly those without children, as that population was seen to be underserved by existing programs. Founding committee members of Fresh Start included Eleanor Innerson, who was quoted as saying, There were seven of us when we just decided, come hell or high water, that if there was a need, somebody ought to do something about it. Other founders included Virginia Hall and the Reverend Charles Stephen. With donation from the Woods Charitable Foundation and the Sisters of Charity Healthcare Foundation, the through St. Elizabeth Community Health Center, they launched a program to give homeless women a fresh start. The original location of Fresh Start Home was 1809 Ryan's Street, a home de donated by founding committee member Joyce Burgess. Eleanor Anderson, Virginia Hall, and Charles Stephen all served on the board of directors in the early years. In 1994, Fresh Start moved to a brick fourplex at 2323 F Street, increasing the bed capacity to 12. Eventually, the board acquired the brick duplex next door as well. Renovations connected both properties, increasing capacity to 16 and added mu adding much needed living and office spaces. In 1997, church member Susan Scott joined the board of directors. In 2000, the Marge Marlette Reporting and Resource Center was opened. This center was a collaboration between Fresh Start and the St. Monica's Substance Abuse Treatment Center for Women and was funded by Lancaster County and the state of Nebraska. The center, located at 1000 O Street, housed a program designed to support women being released from prison on parole or probation. It also served as a sentencing alternative for women who might otherwise be incarcerated. In 2005, Fresh Start launched a $1.3 million capital campaign to expand services and address its lengthening waiting list by purchasing and fully renovating a 12,000 square foot building in the Havelock neighborhood. They moved into the new facility in 2007, eventually having 24 beds available. Also in 2007, the Daisy Thrift Shop opened in the new location. Many members of our church have donated goods or volunteered hours at the Daisy, including Jenny Gross, who also served on the board of directors and was described as a key volunteer and support for several years. In 2016, volunteers from the Unitarian Church of Lincoln began cooking and serving evening meals for residents once a month. This effort was spearheaded by Michael Reinmiller and continues to the present day. Many church members and friends have donated their time and effort to keep these dinners happening every month. Church members on the current Fresh Start Board of Directors are Christy Bomstead and Connie Benjamin. Fresh Start has been voted a recipient of our Share the Plate program 
for most years since that program began. We have a basket in our church hallway for ongoing donations of needed goods and supplies. Over the almost 30-year history of Fresh Start, church members have given their time serving on the board of directors, volunteering at the Daisy, or cooking and serving Sunday evening dinners. Fresh Start is a vital organization in Lincoln that helps reduce homelessness in our city, and the Unitarian Church of Lincoln has been an enthusiastic and committed partner in that effort for almost 30 years. History of the Interfaith Housing Coalition and the President and Ambassador Apartments. The President and Amb Ambassador are two apartment buildings located at the corner of 14th Street and Lincoln Mall, directly across the street west of the Capitol Building. They were built in 1928 as apartment buildings. One family owned the building for over 50 years and then ownership changed a few times. In 1989, a need for affordable housing in downtown Lincoln led the city to commission a downtown housing study. The previous year, the president and ambassador had been purchased with the idea to turn one building into office space and to tear down the other for surface parking. As part of its conclusions, the downtown housing study noted that the president and ambassador apartment buildings were a major candidate for a conversion program. The following is taken from the Interfaith Housing Coalition Board Members Manual. Quote, the mayor, Mike Johans, got involved, approving city involvement and keeping the buildings as housing. With the mayor's blessing, the city's urban development department set out to save the buildings for housing and developed a plan to establish a nonprofit organization that could act as the general partner in a limited partnership that would purchase and rehabilitate the buildings and operate them as affordable housing. Charles Stephen, minister of the Unitarian Church, was contacted and indicated an interest in being involved. He contacted Otis Young, his friend and the minister at First Plymouth Congregational Church, who in turn contacted Rex Bevins from the St. Paul United Methodist. Urban Development staff, staff met with the representatives of the three churches who agreed to enter into this partnership. Legal documents forming the nonprofit and the partnership were developed, and the city loaned the partnership $567,000 to purchase the buildings in December of 1991. The AP Limited Partnership was created to develop, own, and manage the project. The partnership was also necessary for the purpose of selling historic and low-income housing tax credits to bring equity into the project. The primary funding for the project was the low-income in tax credits that were purchased by a surety insurance company in Lincoln." End quote. One member of the, of the Unitarian Church of Lincoln who was involved from practically the beginning of the project was Gail Linderholm. Here are some of her memories that she has agreed to share with us. As I remember it, I became aware of the Interfaith Housing Coalition when I was serving on the Lincoln Interfaith Council. I was also on the church's social action committee at the time. At LIC, we were talking about refugee resettlement and the lack of low-income housing in Lincoln. Someone mentioned the partnership of churches that responded to a call for a nonprofit to be established to partner with local banks for a tax increment financing proposal in 1991. The president and the ambassador had been identified as the project. I asked which churches were involved and, when, and was shocked when Norman Leach told me the Unitarian Church, First Plymouth, and St. Paul United Methodist. I had served on the UU Board of Trustees and on the Foundation and had never heard of Interfaith Housing Coalition. I did have friends among refugee families who lived at the President and Ambassador and knew other residents who were clients who lived there who were clients of the Nebraska AIDS Project. I dug a little further and found that our church representative on the Interfaith Housing Coalition Board was John Taylor, now deceased. I made an appointment to visit with John, who was a lawyer, about the project. We had a good discussion about the challenges and pitfalls of this low-income housing project. Among these were 
lack of funding, undercapitalization, limited ability to raise rents, thus project income, because of the low housing rules, low income housing rules, and the fact that the three churches hadn't really been asked to commit a substantial financial amount, even though it was hoped by the IHC board that they would. John Taylor was facing, was facing health problems, and when I asked if I could serve with him on the Interfaith Housing Coalition board, he said that if it was okay with Charles, it was okay with him. He introduced me to other members and resigned soon after that. The goal was always to have two board members from each participating church. John had warned me that the strongest voice on the board was Peter Catt, another lawyer and representative of First Plymouth, who wanted to dissolve the IHC partnership as soon as legally possible and turn the property into a parking lot for the capital area. This made me more interested in seeing that not happen, and I became a committed board member and adversary of Peter's. I pushed to broaden the board and increase interest in the project in general. I wrote several successful grants from local foundations to, among other things, assist IHC with funding a tenant services position. We established volunteer days where church volunteers and some resident volunteers worked on sweat equity projects, such as cleanup, landscaping, and painting. My best moment was getting Orvis Wall to join me on the board and he contributed his incredible knowledge of construction and operations of heating and air conditioning, which was invaluable to the board. Thanks to Orvis's know-how, we divided the community room so we had a large storage room for food bank items and basic household goods for needy residents, which we got from the Center for People in Need. Orvis was incredible in asking questions when a major overhaul of the heating system was undertaken in 1992-93 and new windows installed in 2003, courtesy of Lincoln Action Program Weatherization Program. Board members worked to understand and address police calls to the buildings and in endeavored to evict problem tenants, while at the same time making efforts to market to a wider audience. We hosted Thanksgiving dinners for the tenants and met with them to address their concerns. I am very proud of the church volunteer work I did there. I am gratified that not only does the project still exist, it has undergone another major renovation thanks to the hard work of the next group of board members, especially those from the Social Action Committee of our church. I do not know how long I served on the IHC, but I loved every minute of it. For over a year, I worked alone during the week cleaning out and repainting apartments so new tenants could move in. The reason was that the Concord management firm had already spent the allowable maintenance budget. On many of those days, the Bosnian families who lived in the building would come and get me to have coffee or eat lunch with them. I will never forget those acts of kindness. Other church members who showed up to help during my tenure. Tim Johnson, Sherrod Sait, Bridget Christensen, Charlie Huber, Bill Ganucci, and Martha Horvey, Jim Bennett, Joe Donahoe, Bob Stoddard, Barb Pearson and Kids, Karen Deanspear. My apologies for not getting others who helped, for forgetting others who helped. We never could have accomplished so much with so little money without their help. We were able to add volunteers to the board. Tom Dirks, who was Catholic, and Bev Fleming from Lincoln Housing Authority, and their contributions were noteworthy. Thank you, Gail, for these great stories. The current stated purpose of the Interfaith Housing Coalition is, the Interfaith Housing Coalition, IHC, is the 501c3 nonprofit corporation that owns and operates the President and Ambassador Low Income Housing Project, now called the ANP Project along with the project investors and managers. IHC was organized in 1991 with the support and encouragement of the Lincoln community, especially including First Plymouth Congregational Church, St. Paul United Methodist, and the Unitarian Church. 
The President and Ambassador apartment buildings exist for the purpose of promoting low-income housing and ministering to the needs of those persons in need of affordable housing in an independent and dignified setting. IHC's Board of Directors is comprised of volunteers who oversee the project's mission. Some are affiliated with the three founding churches, as well as at-large members from across the community. 71 people now live at the President and Ambassador Apartments. Both building and grounds underwent a complete renovation in 2014. Other church members who have served on the IHC board are Rick Goodman and Marianne Meisner. My apologies to those whose names I could not uncover. Current representatives for our church on the Interfaith Housing Coalition Board are Les Manns and Shirley Williams. The relationship between the Unitarian Church of Lincoln and the Interfaith Housing Coalition and the President and Ambassador Apartments is one of our hidden gems, a connection with our community that reflects our principles and is a good example of showing up for nearly 30 years. Thank you.